Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, August 28th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A couple of times now in recent weeks, I talked about the diaries that Xavier, for example, wrote about Python malware written for Windows. And I was always a little bit surprised because there is extra effort involved here by the attacker. The attacker must first install Python before their script will run. So Xavier today took a look at why Python has become so popular. He has a couple of reasons here. First of all, well, installing it is not that difficult, doesn't require elevated privileges because you just need to install the Python subsystem as a normal user. And the fact that Python doesn't come by default with Windows may actually make it more interesting. And that's something that I wasn't really aware of, but Xavier mentions in his blog post the built-in scripting languages like PowerShell and Visual Basic Script and JavaScript, they have hooks to interface with the anti-malware scan interface for Windows or AMSI. This is infrastructure that Windows provides in order to make it easier for anti-malware to inspect a code written in these languages. But with Python not being a standard component, it's not integrated into AMSI. And that, of course, may make it a little bit more difficult for anti-malware to actually inspect the code. Also, well, Python being Python, it has libraries for everything, including specific libraries in order to interface with API calls. So any DLL that's already on the system, well, Python is able to load and take advantage of whatever functionality these DLLs expose. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to outright block Python, but then again, if you have a lockdown workstation that doesn't need Python, well, uh, no reason to allow users to install and run Python on these workstations, and that may actually defend against a number of different threats. And CISA updated its guidance regarding exploited vulnerabilities in OFBIS. The problem here has been that OFBIS has been suffering from a number of very similar vulnerabilities. And actually, we reported a couple weeks ago, I think it was, about an OFBIS vulnerability. Turns out that the exploit actually worked also against a newer vulnerability and you really have to update to the latest version of OS of this in order to be fully protected so make sure you're up to date and run at least 18.12.15 and talking about exploited vulnerabilities, well, we actually have a couple more to talk about today. First of all, Versa Director. Versa published a bulletin with an update to Versa Director. This particular vulnerability has already been actively exploited before the patch became available. It's a product that's typically used sort of by uh, managed service providers and the like. It's for uh, data center admins and uh, managing a data center system admin privileges and the like. Well, uh, this is exactly what the attackers were going after. They were going after managed service providers. If you're in that category, if you're using a Versa director, assume compromise at this point. And the vulnerability patched in Google Chrome last week is now being exploited. There are also related updates uh, to Microsoft's Edge uh, browser. It's not quite clear if this vulnerability was exploited uh, before the patch was released. At least according to Google, an exploit was available before the patch was released. So possible that it had already been exploited, just the exploit activity had not been detected as such. And Mark Ermolov, a researcher with Positive Technologies, has been able to extract Intel's SGS root provisioning key. The significance of this is that uh, together with the FK1 or root ceiling key, which also has been compromised in the past, it's now possible to actually emulate the root of trust for Intel's software guard extension. 
And having these keys potentially enables the type of evil made attacks for an attacker with physical access to the system may be able to compromise firmware, but typically this will also first require that an attacker is setting the system into unlock mode. Well, there have been a number of vulnerabilities in the past that allowed that, so definitely not good that these keys are now essentially public and uh, well we'll see how intel will ultimately respond to this and well that's it uh, for uh, today uh, just a quick update on next week's uh, podcast there will be no podcast on labor day monday a holiday here i'll also be traveling uh, next week i don't think it will disrupt the recording schedule i'll uh, be in vegas starting uh, wednesday so we'll see how it goes possible that there will be no podcast tuesday or wednesday depending on how flights work out and well that's it for today thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow